What up all, my name is Thomas. If you're new to this channel, if you're new to this video series, what we're doing is taking you through how to set up a Clojure script project from scratch. But again, if you are brand new to this channel, no worries because we have a link above and there will be a link in the description below as well as timestamps so you can catch up and get to where we are right now in the series. And if you haven't already, like the video, subscribe to the channel and feel free to leave some comments and let me know how things are going. I actually just also changed the font size on a lot of my videos so please let me know if they are a little bit better now I know there was some trouble reading them from before this video is gonna build on the previous video where we showed you how to set up npm packages inside of a closure script project and what we're gonna show you in this video is how you might use vanilla react and the reason why I want to do that is even though that I use wrappers things like reagent helix fulcro they are awesome I use them in my production application the reason why I don't want to do that in this video is because number one it's a getting started with closure script script from scratch series and number two I always feel that closure script interop is kind of something that trips up newcomers to the language and maybe this will help by demoing and contextualizing some of this stuff a little bit so what I thought might be actually neat is to just pull up the react documentation on the left here and on the right what you see is just my code editor with the project that we've been working on from the beginning in the exact same state as it was before the things that I did was delete the CP cache and the target directory, but you can keep everything else. I just did that to make everything clean. The reason why I pulled up the React documentation on the left is because I kind of thought it might be interesting to just see how I might work through it and the things that I pick out and I identify and how I might translate that over to Clojure Script. And fair warning, there's going to be a bunch of concepts that are going to need even more contextualization in the future, but I don't want to make this video too long. So what I'm going to do is identify them, put descriptions in the link below to resources that will help you learn more about them. All right, so what we would normally do is I would go through the React site and I would just say, okay, they have an example of a component, a stateful component, a whole application, and they're using some external plugins. But what I want, okay, I want to get started by actually learning React. What I will start with is add React to a website because this is the most basic example that I believe that there is. So let's just open up that page. And with this opened up, we see that there are some steps that we can start following down here. They have a little full example that we could download. We don't need that for this because uh, we actually have most of our projects set up already in the Hello World app that we've been building. So the first thing they tell us to do is they want us to go and update our index.html file. Our index.html file lives inside resources slash public. So what we want to do is take out all of this content here. We don't actually need any of that. And if you haven't used React before, React renders itself inside of a div container or any container element that you give it. So in this case, we're going to give ours an ID. And we're just going to give it something super obvious and specific to our application just to make things clear. So we'll call it hello world container and we'll save. So the next step is we actually have to add in some script tags and the preferred way would be to use NPM. However, I do want to just follow along with this guide as is just to show you that you can use CDNs and how that might work as well, because a lot of examples of JavaScript projects are going to actually be done like this. So all I'm going to do is copy these first two here. The reason why I don't need this one is because that file there, I kind of already have that with this. We already have our main JS file. So I'll paste those in here and we'll save that up. So based on this guide, that should be everything that we need. Now I can go on to creating a React component. So for that, I'm going to go into our app.cljs file. And we had some stuff there before. I'm just going to delete it so it's all clean. So if we look at what they're doing here, they have done the first line, which is just a little helper. And it's like, hey, I'm going to assign create element, the helper method that actually creates React elements, just to E you know, a variable just so that it's easier to actually use. And they've actually defined a class component here. We don't actually want to do much with a class component because I just don't want to get into that level of detail right now. What I do want is just how would I just render an element onto the screen? I don't need it to like tell me that I like this or I didn't like this when I click it. That would be the stateful part of it. I just want to render it. So what I want to do is I'm actually literally going to copy and paste these things that I want to use into my file. And I'm going to comment some of them out. So these are just going to be references. Normally, I would not keep these around. If I was writing this myself, I'm just doing this for teaching purposes. 
and we need this guy right here. And the reason is because your render method has to return an element, a React element. So all we really need is this right now. And I'll show you why we only need this shortly. And we'll comment that out as well. Okay, so we have some ugly code already. So what we're gonna do is take each one of these and convert them into their closure script equivalent. So instead of a cons, we do a def E, and then we're going to do JS slash react dot create element. And that is everything there. Then I will go down here and we need to create an actual element. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an element and I'm also gonna store it inside of a binding. So I will just call it hello world. And if we see what they did, they say you need to use E because that's this method here that we just, or that binding that we just defined. And the first argument that it gets is going to be what HTML element do you want? So in this case, I just wanna do an H1. The second one is going to be what are the props because you know that's an on click and we know that's a prop and in this case I don't want anything so I'm just going to give nil as the response there or as the argument there. Last one we need to actually give it children and in this case what this would be the equivalent of if you were writing this in HTML is h1 and then words here and then close that up with h1. So this is the children so instead of that Let's pass them in here and do hello world. And we'll delete out that stuff there. So these are the closure script equivalents of everything that we just did. Now I'm going to take a beat and let's look at what this is. JS is, you can consider that as the global namespace that we use in closure script interop to access the global JavaScript API or the web API. And by web API, I mean things like document and by the JS API, I mean things like maybe the math library. So we'll go ahead and delete these little comments now. I don't think those ones are needed anymore. And we'll save that up. So from here, I'm just gonna close up that little helper and let's look at what the next part is. It seems like the next part is we need to actually grab the DOM container that we added. So we need to gain access to this and then we need to put our React application or render our React application right here into this DOM container right here. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, I'm just going to copy this code verbatim, comment it out. And I will also copy the React render part of the code and we'll put that here. So again, all we're gonna do is go through this and turn this into ClojureScript. So we'll do def dom container. And notice that I did not do camel case, I'm doing lisp case. That's the convention that we use in Clojure Script, so I'm just gonna to align to that in general. And then we have to use, and remember when I was saying that the, the JS slash is like a global accessor to the web API? Document is the web API. So if we want to write that, the way that would look is I'm gonna actually start off and do something that is new and I'll talk about it a little bit later. And that's the double dot macro. And then we're gonna do this, JS slash document dot query selector hash and we will take the name because what we need is this container so we'll take the name of the container and i'm just going to put it here so what we're going to do here is start off by just doing js slash react dom and we'll do double dot render and then the first argument that render gets is it wants to render a react element so we'll throw that in there and the second argument is where you want that element to render and we want it to go inside of dom container but remember we are using lisp case here so we will do that all right so let's clean up all this stuff here and i'm going to focus just really briefly on this here so what I introduce here is you see it used twice and we're just going to call this the double dot special form. Uh, and what this one does is this is specifically for closure script interop. It's kind of like a threading macro where it makes things look more readable. There's going to be a description of this and link to resources where you can learn more about this in the description box below.
it seems like I've actually accidentally made a few errors here. Uh, maybe pause the video, this could be kind of fun, and see if you can find them. There are three errors that have been made. All right, so uh, the three errors that I made, uh, if we come down here to DOM container, it's query selector, not query select. I misspelled react. It should be react, not react. And this one might be a little tricky, but the double dot macro, the way that I'm using it right now, what I'm saying is that's incorrect. So the way that this would actually work is you do double dot macro, we'll do the namespace, and then you want to access the method that you want to use. So that should be the correct form of that. And with that, we should now be able to run our app. So let's pull up our terminal, CLJ dev. And now it's time for a little coffee, friends. And it seems to have worked. Let's just open up the console. There shouldn't be any errors, but I'm just going to do that. Great. All right, so let's actually see that we can actually update things, you know, because we connected our HMR, wouldn't that be nice? So if we change it from world to Wayne's world, we see that it automatically updates for us. Okay, that is great. All right, but the thing that we're doing right now is we're using a CDN, and I said that we were going to be using the NPM package. So let's actually see what it would look like to turn this, what we just wrote, using the CDN, and I'll convert that over to the NPM package. So the first thing that I'm going to tell you to do is go over here to our index.html file. We no longer need these scripts right here because we are going to be using the npm package, not the CDN. So we can just save that. Don't worry about your code on the, on the left. Uh, the HTML changes don't trigger a reload. Then we can actually pull up our terminal. And the thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to close this down. And we need to install using npm react and react dom so we'll press enter on that and now we have react and react dom installed using our npm setup so now what we need to do is we actually need to require in react and react dom so we're going to say react and we'll do react dom now that we're not using the cdn anymore we actually want to use the react packages, the React namespaces that we just required right here. So to make that work, we have to go through each one of these lines of code and find everywhere where we were referencing the global instance through the JS namespace and change that to the React namespace here. So for example, we have JS slash React. This is going to become React and then slash create element. So we can save that up. Nothing needs to be changed on this line. Nothing needs to be changed on this line because document is, you know, the web API. So that's good. This one here will need to change and you'll see some more interesting changes here. So we need to take all this away, including the double dot macro. So we'll do react dash dom and then we'll do slash and then we can just do render like that. Everything else like the argument positions all stays the same. And that should be everything to get us going and we will do clj-a dev to just start the application. That seems to be everything. Let's just look in the console, see if there are any errors. There are no errors, it seems. We can update this and we'll take away the Wayne's part and see that everything updates accordingly. Yes, it does. All right, great. So this is how you would break down something like a JavaScript project, go through the documentation and just convert that over to a closure script. And again, the goal isn't to get too deep into closure script interop. It was meant to contextualize, to give you a demo and to really show you that closure script is super friendly with the JavaScript ecosystem and learning some of the basic rules of closure script interop go a huge way. Resources again are going to be in the description below so you can read up a little bit more about that stuff. So if you want to learn more about ClojureScript and NPM, ClojureScript interop, or any specific topic in ClojureScript, please feel free to comment below, send me an email, go to my website, uh, betweentwoparens.com. Just check out any of those things and let me know what you're interested in learning. I've got a bunch of content planned out, but it's always great to hear what everyone is kind of interested in learning. So thank you very much for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and I look forward to seeing you again.